And uh, this is this is, I think, when we throw it to the greatest newsman in any time history, <laughs> there despite you... being the only one. That's a I'm both the best and the worst, the alpha and the omega. Let's do it. Let <laughs> us take a look at some of the news coming our way here today. We've got some headlines. Finally, the man who has been ruining those lighthearted death pools in your office for decades has passed away. Henry Kissinger, considered a war criminal by some and eh, probably a war criminal by others, is dead at 100. Like any figure in history, there has always been a deeper and more nuanced way to look at someone who played such a prominent role in history and affected not just our own country here, America, home of the brave, home of the bold, home of the perfect, but the world at large. And so it was with Henry Kissinger until... I don't know, people actually started taking a deeper, more nuanced look at him. A Jewish immigrant from Germany whose family got out just months before the Nazis made leaving impossible, Kissinger's rise to prominence as a barrier-breaking diplomat and political figure is notable. He also helped open China to the U.S., if not the world, negotiated our exit from the near-pointless Vietnam War, and helped secure our nation's dominance over the Soviet Union while beginning to thaw out the Cold War through his and Nixon's policy of détente, which was also the first time many Americans learned a French word. But stopping there is like watching Matt Reif crowd work videos and saying, yeah, go ahead, give him a special. Kissinger's amoral approach to achieving victory both for himself and America often put him, and therefore us, at odds with little annoying things like decency, democracy, and human rights. But he sure was charming. So he remained popular, respected, and if you were Barbara Walters, loved as one of your besties. You TikTok kiddies only know him as a bag of old bones who was squished into chairs for photo ops as he offered foreign policy advice to every American president from Kennedy to Nixon to known milkshake with a straw drinker Joe Biden. But my generation grew up with Kissinger as some sort of celebrity. It was bizarre. And before remarried in 1974, good old Henry was known for using his power as an aphrodisiac, his words, and was linked to many beautiful women in the late 60s and early 70s. Meaning he didn't just screw South Vietnam before pulling out abruptly, he may have done so with rumored paramours like Shirley MacLaine, Candace Bergen, and Zsa Zsa Gabor. You know, there is a tragic and volatile situation still playing out in Gaza and Israel as a tense, fragile truce has ended despite uh, some hostages finally being released by Hamas while much needed aid was allowed to get to Palestinians. But we don't have that much time to cover that story because we have to mention the man whose shuttle diplomacy in the 70s seemed to help ease tensions in the Middle East but didn't actually bring needed peace. It was just a power play to ease the USSR out of a power position in the Middle East. And so it was with Kissinger. From a distance, this 1973 Nobel Peace Prize winner helped make America great in the eyes of the world. But he used smaller countries, governments, and people as chess pieces in the game he wanted to win. Power. Unlimited power, which also set the template on how to become a success successful lead personality at a YouTube movie news channel. So, sorry to those who loved him, liked him, and fucked him. But Henry Kissinger is gone, dead at 100, and I hope everyone wins their office death pool this year. And in what we can call breaking news an hour or so before the show, it happened. And the world laughed. That's right. We have got the final story we think for now at least on george santos folks the reign of lies is over george santos aka anthony devolder aka katara Rav ravage aka kid atrium aka billy bonnie aka william h bonnie was expelled from congress congress in a vote just this morning 105 republican representatives reached across the aisle to vote out santos this following a scathing house house ethics committee report on the actions of santos before and during his short time in congress he is currently facing 23 indictments for various charges like fraud conspiracy and false statements but surprisingly he was never charged for wearing a pullover sweater over a button-up dress shirt. Those 23 indictments leave Santos 68 charges short of being the leading GOP candidate for president. 114 representatives, including two Democrats, voted against the expulsion, many of them on the grounds that since Santos has yet to be convicted of these charges, it would set a dangerous precedent that members of Congress could be expelled for actions other people don't like and set the bar for expulsion at your behavior and those actions. You know what? It actually sounds reasonable. But then you have to consider why people like Matt Gates voted against expulsion because it 
would do, quote, grave damage to this institution. Next, Gates seems to be saying you could expel someone for, I don't know, appearing to court underage sex workers with nothing but years of Venmo transactions, photos, and videos to prove it. Dangerous ground indeed. But for now, Santos is the sixth person expelled from Congress and will not have more free time to save the city citizens of Gotham City under whatever alter ego he will now move on to. And finally, there's a lot of other news out there, but we close with this one. And yes, we're going to talk about it a little bit more right after this segment in our final story this week. The magazine that gave us legendary sports writers like Peter Gammons, Frank DeFord, Rick Riley, Paul Zimmerman, Jackie McMullen, yes, even once Kurt Vonnegut, Sports Illustrated. That venerable magazine found in waiting rooms everywhere got caught with their hands in the AI cookie jar. Now, to be clear and fair, Sports Illustrated, which is now a website with a monthly magazine, didn't have an AI program write articles about sports and try to pass it off as real. That would be weird, and I'm sure no companies or publications are out there trying to do that right now. But SI had hired a company called Advon Commerce, itself a name that sounds like it was created by an AI program trying to act normal, created product review stories to be run under the SI banner. These articles were said to have been written by authors such as Drew Ortiz, shown here looking nothing like a character you created from Mass Effect when you were stoned and holding up a mirror. A big fan of being outdoors, Drew was happy to review some products for you to use in said outdoors. But, and this will shock you, Drew Ortiz is not real and he had brought with them many other not real writer friends. Sports Illustrated denied knowing that this is what they hired Advon Commerce for, and all the articles were immediately pulled. Next, you're gonna tell me that those Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues I stuffed under my bed had photos that were altered as well. Please no. Sports Illustrated announced an internal investigation, probably to find out who leaked their diabolical plan to the world and cut ties with the company they claim is responsible. Representatives from Advon Commerce were reached for comment, but none was given because clearly it's a company run by Cylons looking to destroy Earth like they did Caprica. It's all just another sign that the world we live in is rapidly devolving into the plot of Wally, and there's nothing we can do about it as long as profit is being made for those at the top. That's the news, Alden. Anything you want to talk about.